<laughs> I was looking at my scan. The nervous system. Well, I have one finding. Basically, it said that I have awful knees, and I knew I knew that. A bad back, and by awful knees and a bad back, I mean I overused both of them. I wasn't nervous about anything. I mostly did this because I was nervous about you. I put this video up right after we did the actual scan because I do want other people to know that that's my in-laws that are upstairs. I'm smiling because I could have gotten up and been like, I'm going to cut that out, but I'm not because it's the joy of having family around and trying to do all these things, which is why anybody who's curious as to where they stand, how things are functioning inside of their body, and they don't want to wait for somebody to prescribe something because it's potentially too late at that point, pre-Nova was a thousand percent worth it. I put up a YouTube about this back after, right after I took it. pre -Nuvo scan is on Wednesday. Uh, how am I feeling about it? Anxious, nervous. I'm anxious and I'm nervous about Tim's results because he has a lot of cancer in his family. But I, but I failed to say exactly what happened to Kelly coming out of it. As you might have just heard her say, or maybe Sloan cuts it in here. I wasn't nervous about anything. I mostly did this because I was nervous about you. She was really doing it because of me. And it's great that she knows a bit more about how her body is right now and how she should be aware of what's happening, especially as much as she trains for marathons. But my family's history just made this an absolute no brainer. And I couldn't be more thankful to have that as a baseline now. I am really unsure about how to feel about this. Two days out from Pre Nouveau, it is Monday, March 4th. I'm trying to tell myself that regardless of what happens, it's not gonna send me in a different direction. I don't wanna think about the possibility of something being there and then being like, oh shit. I have to stay in corporate America forever now. I also don't want to think about the possibility of like, oh, here comes chemo, here comes your turn, Tim. That number 52 has haunted me for a while because I always thought, what if I ended up with what my dad had? Oh, where to begin? I was 20 years old. This is the room I was sitting in when I got the call from my parents. I think about 20 years old when I got a phone call from my parents who went along the lines of, hey, we think you should know something. And they basically told me in so many words that my dad had inoperable stage four melanoma. It was 1998, I think. I was up in Canada at school at the time. And what I remember the most about that conversation other than the broader news, which I was having a very difficult time wrapping my head around was, that they kind of didn't want me to come home even with this on the table. I remember being like, are you crazy? Like, I'm, how am I not leaving school right now to come home? I say that as a tee up because cancer has been something that has been in the forefront of family conversations since then. My dad was about 52 at the time. I'm 46 now. My dad ended up surviving. He was one of 85 patients that survived an experimental chemotherapy concoction that had never been used on human beings at the time. Since then, my mom has been diagnosed, I believe, seven or eight times with cancer. So when I first saw something called pre pop up, offering full body diagnostics where you see everything, if there's anything to find, they will find it. When I first saw that pop up, I thought, that's so smart like to be able to potentially get ahead of it. On top of my parents, and some of you found me in social media because of this, I lost my closest friend since third grade almost two years ago now. I don't think he'd even turned 45 yet. He found cancer after it was too late. Another reason why when I saw pre Nouveau pop up, I thought that is super smart. I need to figure out a way to make this happen. So in partnership with them, I present to you this because this is my story of why I thought that this was something that I had to do regardless if I had an opportunity to tell this story with them or not. Like part of me is super nervous. 
think about all the tests that I've put off and all the little things that maybe at 35 would have been smarter to take care of. And now as we get closer to time too, I start to have the thoughts of the six concussions that I had as a kid. And just got the text back from my dad about the laundry list of stuff that he and my mom had. All right, this is take number three. Camera speed, roll speed, action. Okay, now I'm going to sing out of fire, and I'm going to sing out of As you know, family history is not great when it comes to, um, comes to especially cancer, because I've had cancer three different times. They've all been melanoma. Um, it's stretched over uh, a seven-year period from the first one to the second one. Um, the second one was repeated very shortly after having two tumors removed, uh, one from under my arm and one from my collarbone. And, uh, and unfortunately, the one under my right arm reoccurred very shortly thereafter and was determined to be inoperable, um, which meant I had to go through chemotherapy. And I think you've covered my history with chemotherapy, so I will not um, go back into that. Um, as far as my cancer is concerned, I have had many in my throat, my cancer, my tongue, and the inside of my mouth. Too many to remember. And it just hits different when you read it from them versus like, oh, here's my recollection of it that I put into the onboarding process for this pre nuvo scan. And the math, math is kind of crazy. 1991 is when his first thing popped up, which is 33 years ago, which would have made him, Jesus, 43. Hmm. 46, 46. 42nd Street. Stand clear of the closing door, please. You can actually hear the machines swirling in the other room. So we're here, obviously. Time to uh, time to change and go in. Everything about the pre novo brain and the experience felt like this is where healthcare should be. Being in a place that is comfortable with people that are helpful and that this is about trying to get ahead of things, not I already feel something. Please, somebody tell me what this is. Staff was amazing. The facility made it feel like this isn't as jarring as it could be. Process was easy. Get in the tube, you lay down, you stay still. There's a handful of breathing techniques that you do, but nothing that was like too challenging or that made you any more anxious while laying there. I tried to take the time to meditate and distract myself a bit away from what could they potentially find here. Kelly and I went at the same time, which was just hugely convenient to be able to go in at the same time and get out at the same time. And then you wait. How did it go? Uh, it's interesting. Um, I don't know, there's a lot to process, but yet not much to process, because you just lay there. Turnaround was very fast. I think I got my results within five, seven business days or so. Pre Nuvo does an incredible job of making sure that you have somebody to walk you through it afterwards. And they're also very specific about here are ways that you can explore this further or here are next steps that could be recommended as a result of whatever comes back. You know, in regards to your the pelvis and the hips, certainly we notice more on the right side than we do on the left side. Yep. Um, and again, one option could always could be that physical therapy because even if you're feeling you know somewhat okay now, let's try and prevent you from feeling any of these changes in the future. Yep. And at first, it can be a little jarring because they do they are supposed to find things. No human being is perfect, especially at 46 years old. Some things in my back to be aware of relative to making sure I'm not a full hunchback uh, in time. Something in my hip, again just kind of based on either how I've beaten myself up or how I'm just genetically made. Same with knees, but the details and the scans themselves are nuts. It's kind of crazy to have all of these images now on your phone and things that you can call up. And as a baseline for where's my body going to go from here, I don't think you can beat this to have something that is in your pocket or on record forever that says this is where you are at this moment in time. I couldn't be more thankful for having gone through this, but I'll say that the peace of mind that I now have and the awareness of where I can correct my posture, be cognizant of my hips, how I should be cognizant of the tumor in my shoulder, which 
as I will show in the documents, is really just a non-aggressive cyst of some kind and something they said not to be worried about, but to be aware of. The fact that I just know this now is amazing. It's somewhat mind-blowing to a certain extent. It's somewhat mind-blowing that this is not something that's available to everybody as just part of our healthcare system. So I couldn't be more thankful to have been given the opportunity. I a thousand percent was going to do this regardless of whether or not it was in partnership with Prenuvo, but I'm incredibly thankful to them for giving me this opportunity because this allows me to tell the story and kind of forces my hand to be very open about the story. Um, but other than that, I thought your report looked really good. Awesome. I'll take that. Yeah. That's my story. I think that's all I got. So if any of that resonates with you for any reason, yeah, I'm really glad we did it. It's always nice to know.